I was sitting around thinking, what should I do today? Lay around and read or go outside and play. Then the thought hits me like a blown over tree. All I want to do is go out and fish for Kyokuni. Coconut fishing, what could be better? I do it every day and in any kind of weather. Cause being out on the water makes me feel so free. So let's all go out and fish for Kyokuni. I got the best stuff in the business. No doubt about that I want to eat so many fish That I get really, really fat With the kokanee chaos and the fatal attraction I'll we'll catch all the fish before they have a chance for reaction Cooking and fishing, what could be better? I do it every day and in any kind of weather Being out on the water makes me so free, so let's all go out and fish for Kyokuni, yeah. You know I've only been out here for what seems like three minutes. I thought I'd show people how I fish for Kokanee at Strawberry Reservoir and Flaming Gorge Reservoir. I mostly fish for kokanee on the Wyoming side. Wyoming, the kokanee are a lot bigger. They sometimes you can get one up to six pounds. So first, I'll start out with the dodgers I use. The my favorite dodger. I make most of my stuff, and my favorite dodger is this one right here. And I, all I do is I put the tape on, I put the eye on, and then I put the swivels on. But this is my favorite. And the blanks come like this, and so you just have to put tape on them. And the tape, I buy my tape off from eBay, and then there's two or three other places I buy it from. But like this one here is my favorite, and you can get quite a few cuts out of here. I cut them with the scissors and if you want you can pay somebody to cut them out for you but it costs a little bit more money. And this one here a few years ago used to be my favorite tape but now this one here is and this is a, a pink one and this one here is an orange one. Sometimes I'll put half pink and half of this kind here on it and so these are some of the dodgers, like this one here, I will run a squid on, on it. This one here, I'll run a pink squid on it. I like squids, I use squids about 80% of the time. And all of these I've made, I put tape on, and they cost, they, these here cost me less than two dollars a piece and this one here has got a little bit of orange so I'll run an orange squid on that one this is an orange last year orange was a, a good color and so I I would always run at least one setup with an orange and you see just about everything I use is a five five point five inch sling blade and this is here is a different orange that works good and so these are and this one's a green one, and not with the green, I like to I like to run a spin a <coughs> harness that that has beads on it and two hooks with um, either a Colorado Colorado blade or an Indiana blade, and I'll on these I'll put it, like to run them with about an 18 inch leader. And also, this color here works good for catching cutthroats at Strawberry Reservoir. And this in here, I paint, you paint the outside, and then I put these on. You can see that some of my cuts look like a third grader, but they work. And so I'll, and with anything with orange on it, I'll run an orange squid. And then 
a green one, I will run a green squid or a green worm harness. My second favorite Dodger is the Mac Double D Dodger. And I, I'll always start out running one of these. You can either put an orange squid on it or a, or a pink. And so this here is another green, green color Dodger that works good. Now the, this one here is an Aero Flash Dodger. I have to buy these because I don't, I don't know where they buy the blanks for these. So you, these, these are quite expensive. They cost close to ten dollars, but they work pretty good. They're probably about my third favorite Dodger. They come in several different colors, and. And then this is a Dakota Dodger. It's probably my fourth favorite. I don't use them very often, but they work. They work quite well for cutthroats at Strawberry with the green. I can put you know different colors on here and try them. With these, I I think you need to troll a little bit slower for them to work. And I my trolling speed is varies. And the <clears throat> so we'll kind of go in. I put my <clears throat> squids. I package them in packages like this, and I kind of I'm always thinking out of the box on how to tie them. And so this one here is probably one of my favorite setups. We'll take it out of here. These are already pre-tied. And but you can see the way I've Tie this. I have. I'll put a pink hook here, and when I tie my hooks, I use 15 pound P line fluorocarbon, and then I, I like to put a bead between the hooks. And sometimes I tie these. I'll I experiment to see which way is the best. And I don't know which is the best. Either putting them opposite or together. I put beads up inside of here. These are glow beads up inside of the body. And this here, and I'll put a bead here. And then this is a floater. I got this idea of putting floaters on there from people that fish for walleye. And this, this really works good. And I have a... <coughs> And I, I like, this is a small, small spinner. This is probably an Indiana blade. Now I use a quick change here so I can change that blade. I have quite a few blades and if this one doesn't work, I'll just try another different blade on it. And I, I tie my leader. When I have these spinners on last year, 80% of the squids I used had spinners on them. Either spinners or a smile blade, and I ha I tie I pre-tie these at at ten inches because I've got this on. There's a little bit of action here, and some I like the small blades. I'll run blades that are from anywhere from a zero up to two, number two, and we'll find one that has a smile blade on it here, but. And this here is a new idea I've came up with this year. Now, I don't know if it's going to work or not. But this one here, so I've got a silver smile blade on it. And I've got this here spinner. It's a float spinner. And so we'll see if it's going to work. And I, 
I always put a bead right between the two hooks. I use number two hooks and 15 pound P line. And <clears throat> the way I tie these, it seems like they last for a long time before the fish will break that hook. They or break this line. A lot of a lot of times when you buy them from the people that sell them, it seems like they break quite quick. But with this 15 pound P line and the and tying up, I tie a palm palmar knot on this here, and then I snell this one on. And I, these are a small body squids. I use, I'll use a small body squid, and then I use a bigger body squid. And probably my favorite squid is a wind rock. It's a bubble gum that Rocky Mountain sells. But I'll change the hooks on it when I, if I buy them from them, I'll usually run them the way they have them set up. And then, then once their hooks break, they use they use number four hooks. And once their hooks break, then I'll set it up these this way. And so I've we have orange, and I, these are some different spinners on them that I use. And this one here has another one of those little spinners on it, but but this float, you can't believe the difference it makes. It makes a lot of difference, and so now kokanee, you never know what they're going to bite, so you need to keep changing. Now, there's been times when I've been fishing for kokanee that this here flasher was the only thing that would work, so you need to keep changing different stuff. Like, there was one day I've tried this other stuff I had and it, nothing would work, so I would try, a, so I put a flashers on, and then I started catching kokanee. So this is what the blank looks like. And I buy them in bulk there, and each one of them Dodgers probably cost me less than $2 a piece to make. The squids I buy come in packages. I use, I buy them in bulk too. This here's a small body squid. They're an inch and a half. And then this one here has a little bit bigger body. And they have it's this one here's a little over two inches. And so what I'll do is I'll cut this cut the tails off on this one. So they're so the overall body is either an inch and a half or inch and three quarters. The the hooks, I you know I buy them in bulk. They're number two hooks. And these here are pink, and then these are red. They're Gamagasi hooks. And sometimes I'll use this here, a number two split shot and drop shot hook. They claim that they hook better than the, the other ones. And to keep before I go fishing this is one way I'll put stuff on here and, uh, and then then they're right there in the open and if I want to change lures I can just grab these really quick I'll have them set up the night before I prepare what I'm going to do the night before I go fishing so that I can do things fast and this one here is a uh, it's kind of a setup that I, I have caught kokanee on this, but mostly I'll catch cutthroats. I have a, it's a sudden death hook on these, and you can see, now this, I have to put, I put a swivel in here because this thing starts spinning, and you'll thread a worm up on there, and there's certain times of the year that is a killer for rainbow trout and cutthroat trout at strawberry and the same thing here but I only have one one hook on this one on this sudden on this sudden death hook I use small beads I have small beads on here but these are there's some glow-in-the-dark beads different colors I like green a lot so I'll mix 
green, white, black, blue. And I'll run I'll run these with a green dodger. And I'll, I'll even go up to as high as number eight beads on here. So we'll, I'll ch I have different setups. And this is, here's a, a squid, which is an orange, orange and white squid. It's got a smile blade on it. And this here's a little corky. Now the little corky works, but it doesn't work quite as good as that long, the long thin one like this. This one here works works the best. And there's been times when I know I've been catching kokanee with these setups and nobody and I haven't seen anybody else catching any. And I catch a lot of kokanee. The, <clears throat> the downriggers I use are Canon downriggers. I have four of them on my boat. And the, what I and, and I have a water wolf camera that I use to study my setups, and I see fish, and I can I can see how fish react with these. I have two of them, and and so there I can. You tail now. Now you take this here dodger right here. It's I have never caught a kokanee on it, but I had this. On, I had it hooked to the camera one time to see what was going on, and there was kokanee. This brought a lot of kokanee in, but they wouldn't bite the setup, and so I'm thinking that they didn't like what I had, the kind of squid or the setup I had on the back of it. And so what I need, if, need to do is this year try three or four different setups on here to see if I can find out whether they want pink or orange or green or a worm harness on here or even an apex lure. Sometimes apex lures are spoons work so I don't use spoons a lot but they do work sometimes and I have tape on this side and then I this is painted side and so with my four downriggers and what I've learned with my camera is my setbacks the way I during the spring when the, the water temperature is the same temperature all the way from the top to the bottom, then my setback for my downriggers is a long ways back. I'll have it either 75, 75 feet or 100 feet. And I like to run two planer boards because the fish move when the, the fish are all usually up high and they will, when the boat comes, they will move to the side of the boat. So when they move, the planer boards will pick them up. And I put I put sinkers about two feet ahead of the dodger to keep to get that down. And so I kind of guess on on the weight of the I put on how many sinkers I put on, how much weight I put on. But a lot of times I've caught kokanee just letting my lines out. So they're right on top. My downriggers, I don't put them very deep. Anywhere from 25 feet to 5 feet with a long setback. But then the, when the water starts warming up, then I will put... I have line counters on my reels. And so and I have each one of my... I number each one of my downriggers. Now I I read one time that this guy catches a lot more kokanee when he only uses two downriggers. But for me, four downriggers works the best because I can have four lines out. And what I've seen is that I'll have my 
the downrigger that's towards the back, I will, you need to know how deep the fish are. Your fish finder, you need a good fish finder to show you how deep the fish are. And also, water temperature is very important. And so I have, I have a fish hawk that I can always watch the temperature, I can watch the speed that my boat's going, and I can tell tell where the the fish are at by the by the temperature because kokanee love temperature that's 52 and 54 degrees i think i've caught more kokanee at 54 degrees than i have at 52 and so so i, I will always i'll check my temperature and i will put one downrigger at 52 degrees if you don't have a fish finder and you don't have Oh, a temperature gauge that you can check the temperature. Then one way is if the fishing forums, a lot of guys will tell you how deep they're catching them, and so then you can go out and try that deep. If you don't have downriggers, you're just guessing at how deep they are. And you can in the spring you can catch kokanee quite easy without downriggers, but as the water warms up and they go deeper then it's hard to get them I there's times when I at Flaming Gorge I'm down to 75 feet catching kokanee but on my setups in the summer when the water temperature has a thermal climb and it it's layered your temperature is layered I will have my setbacks my number one downrigger which would be closer to the boat I will put it put it back I go on I have a right side and a left side so the right side I will call number one downrigger and I will have I have a line counter on my fishing rod I will let that down let, let that back 20 feet and the next downrigger to it I will have a and then I will let that I will put that one down deeper so like if the water temperature you know like so I'll put it down at maybe 30 feet and then the next downrigger on the same side I will let a setback of 30 feet which is 10 feet different and I will set the downrigger at 10 feet difference at higher I will set that downrigger at 10 feet higher than the front one and the reason for that is by I've watched videos of the kokanee and they will if they come to that bottom hook and they don't take it they will move up they'll move up more than they move down I've seen that on the video and so when they come up your your back one if you're going to stack if you only have down two down riggers you can stack and so your stacker is going to be 10 feet higher and at least 10 feet back so that if they miss that one lure setup, they're going to come up and then they'll get your other one. And the same on the other side. So I and I'll have an odd number, the setbacks on one side, and an even number of setbacks on the other side, and that my depth is varied. So every nothing is the same. And I have line counters that keep me straight. And and on your down or on your fish finder you can see where all your balls are at I have a hummingbird fish finder I like I love the spit split screen on it and so that's I think the important it's very important to have your setbacks the right way and always remember that your fish, the kokanee will go up. If he doesn't go to that lure, he will go up and you'll catch it on your next 
set up and sometimes they'll go sideways too and so if they go sideways and up they'll get on the other side and kokanees will be in a lot of schools but sometimes you'll find you know one or two kokanee will follow that lure for a long time it's unbelievable how long that they will follow you and then they'll get tired of following that one they'll take off and they'll go to the next setup and then you'll hook them and it seems like I catch more fish when I go through schools than I do just the singles. 